Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wonderland. I have a, uh, a special video for you today. Earlier this spring, I had the pleasure of hanging out and doing a live stream with Violet Hummingbird, who's another creator here on YouTube and Twitch. One, one of my most favorite things about being a creator in the tarot community on Twitch and YouTube are the people that I have met through this experience and through this process. And that includes viewers like you who are watching because you are what makes this community extra special and so comforting and really making it be this world of our creation. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for all of your support. But one of the other wonderful things about this community is are the other creators as well, where I truly feel like I have found not only just a really wonderful friend in Violet Hummingbird, but just somebody who truly sees people for who they are, loves and respects them for where they are on their journey, and truly wants to help people discover their path, uh, connect to their intuition and their spirituality. And that r r is something I really feel like I have found in a friend in Violet Hummingbird, but also in the community that she has created, in the community that Violet has created, makes you feel totally uplifted and supported on whether this is a creative journey or a spiritual journey or whatever it is that you are seeking to find in a community. I feel like Violet Hummingbird's community has that. Um, so I felt very proud, uh, you know, Leo Pride, to um, collaborate with her in a truly mutual way. I felt like she supported me above and beyond. And she, the feedback that I have from her was that she felt like I supported her. And I just really feel like that is what collaboration is supposed to be about. So anyways, long story short, I've kind of broken down the live stream that we did on Twitch back in April of 2023 and uh, really tried to hone in on the key points of our conversation. Uh, I again want to thank you all for being there for the live stream. Um, but now you get to hear all of the interview questions condensed here in this video. So let's jump into the time portal and go all the way back to April of 2023. And for those of you who are not familiar with Violet and her work, I'm going to allow past Allison to introduce you to her now. She is a content creator focusing on inspiring creativity and spirituality. At the moment, you can find her mostly on YouTube, live streaming tarot readings, planning, writing, and making things. In real life, she is a mom, an artist who loves yoga, her cats, her husband's music, and being surrounded by nature. So we are going to have a little tea party with Violet Hummingbird. And can we get some hype in the chat as I bring her on here? Hello, everyone. I'm glad you yeah. said tea party because I do have a cup of tea here. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, so we, I know you can't see it, but we are sitting at a table in in the forest with what? some some teacups. And um, what kind of tea are you drinking? I have Tulsi Sweet Rose. It's by Organic India. And this is one of my Ooh. favorite teas. I don't even know oh. what it looks like as a plant or where it grows. It's funny because when I see the word Tulsi, I had a cat growing up named Tulsi. And um, my dad grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And there was this stray cat that we adopted. And um, it was like found on the streets of Tulsa. So the person who gave it to us, like, um, named, named him Tulsa and my dad was like that's so weird because that's like where I grew up like he was like let's just call the cat Tulsi so to me it's like my childhood cat <laughs> it's um, funny how things from your childhood like sprout up in your adult life <laughs> yeah. so also on the live stream we played Babbit a witch's card game and it's an original card game where you can choose your witch's path create an initiation ritual, 
set your altar, cast spells, and build your book of shadows. Um, she intends to have expansion packs for them in the future that pertain to each of the different eight sabbats of the Wheel of the Year. Since so you're a witch and you're collecting different tools and symbols and offerings and sacred things, so you're creating an altar uh, and uh, you get to pick which witch, which witch you want to be. Um, so that is where we start our conversation with uh, Violet discussing which witch you relate to most. What, do you consider yourself a witch? I do. I yeah. do. But it's so funny. I think to me, magic is more so entwined into my like lifestyle and not so much like a I have it's interesting I start to talk about it and I'm like oh wait no I, I have done things differently than this but like it, it's less like I sit down and like I'm doing a spell and it's more so like oh I'm infusing intention into like a lot of things that I'm yeah, doing that yeah yeah so what about you <laughs> what type of witch do you would you consider that then I I went through different phases of trying to like label or title my practice in different things and I just I don't have a, a title really I could I could say different influences I feel like I draw from um like green witchcraft but I myself am like not good at gardening yeah. or even house plants and stuff like that so it's like hmm, I feel like can I really call myself like a green witch I mean mm -hmm. I'm really inspired by nature the Fae, I feel super connected to the fairy realm. It's been a thing my whole life, but I'm also not like working fairy magic. Like I'm not like calling in fairies and doing magic with them. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. um, a train's coming. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> cottage, cottage witchcraft. That, that might be closer. Cause I feel like a lot of stuff has to do with like home and lifestyle, but also art magic. Um, mm -hmm. So all of these things <laughs> kind of together. So yeah. I guess that means you associate yourself most with the cottage witch then. Who, you know, if you were to choose one, there are five categories in this game. It's just a game. It's like, <laughs> not serious, just fun. Um, I think I would out of the five associate most with a cottage witch, which mm -hmm. is this card. Bing. Um, but I think I want to see myself as the forest witch. There it is. <laughs> yeah it's well they're very similar i would they say are similar. so in this game each witch is associated with a different element so that's right. kind of what we have going and so we've got the cosmic witch which is a uh, spirit the cottage witch is fire actually because i'm thinking of like the hearth and i'm thinking of cooking and oh, okay. candle yeah, magic yeah. and stuff like that the forest witch is earth and mm -hmm. then we've got the draconian witch which in this game is air and the sea witch, which I bet you can guess is water. Mm -hmm. So which one do you relate most to? Oh God, <laughs> I, I feel like very much a combination of a lot of them. Always drawn to water though in water magic. So I think yeah. I aspire to be a sea witch. And when I lived closer to the ocean, I really... It, like the magic and the power that like the ocean holds is just like mind blowing, but yeah. I haven't been to the beach in forever. So I don't really think I could call myself a sea witch. <laughs> That's like me with plants and be like, I guess I can't be a green witch. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one of the most common questions that witches get asked is how do you get started? What do you recommend for beginners? I think my first tip is and will always be um, to align with your heart, like your heart doesn't lie, you know, like follow the things, not don't follow like, okay, you know, you can have respect for a teacher or, you know, whatever might be an influence, but make sure that everything you you go with is something that aligns with your heart. Mm -hmm. um, and th so I think that's really important. It's like your your own intuition, your own like above all else, it's all within you. And that kind of brings me to the second tip, which is one I hear a lot. And I think it's still really important to say is that you don't need all the tools. It all exists within you. Mm -hmm. And what I would add to that is that I've found sometimes at times when I've thought, I really want this specific thing. 
for my practice. And then perhaps I like am impatient and I immediately reach out. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get that for myself. Mm -hmm. And then it actually appears not too long later in a more magical way. Yeah. Have you had this happen before? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I should have just waited. Like I just, I, I had that thought and then it came to me and I, sh I should have waited. The last little bit that's kind of along that same line is that you don't have to learn everything all at once. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that, um, at least like when I started, I was like, I want to know all of this. And it's really had, it's taken time to say, okay, I'm going to take time and I'm going to really digest tarot. I'm going to like live that and experience that. And now I'm just starting to like move into astrology and starting to learn some of that mm -hmm. stuff. But even just looking into one sort of zone, or I don't know what you would say of spirituality, like within astrology, I still can't get overwhelmed with like, oh, now I have to learn everything. You know, it's like mm -hmm. taking it piece by piece um, with what you're inspired to in each moment, I suppose, and sitting with it. I think, you know, you can, you can call yourself a witch or whatever you want to call yourself without knowing all the things that you feel like you might have to know to be that, you know? Mm -hmm because you don't, <laughs> you can be on a journey. You're always going to be on a journey. Yeah. And, and again, that goes back to what you said initially is finding the, like what you're called to and what mm -hmm. finding, <laughs> finding, connecting to yourself and seeing what you're just naturally attracted to. I agree with what Violet has to say for beginner witches to find that thing that your heart feels drawn to. And I think what she said can be summed up with this quote, to be free is to be capable of thinking one's own thoughts, not the thoughts merely of the body or of society, but thoughts generated by one's deepest, most original, most essential and spiritual self, one's individuality. That's a quote from Rudolf Steiner who is also one of Violet's influences. Um, is there anybody out there, though, that has inspired your path? It's funny because if we're just talking about, like, witchcraft in general, I I just have a, a lot of different books, and I feel like I've picked up pieces of things here and there and um, watched videos and stuff like that. It's hard to pinpoint exactly, like, this is my influence in terms of, like, witchcraft. Um, but I will say in terms of, like, esoteric, type spirituality. What I'm really influenced right now is uh, Rudolf Steiner. I'm really relating to that body of work. It's in, it's a massive body of work mm -hmm. and I, and I, I don't know all of it yet. So um, don't hold me to anything <laughs> he says or puts out there because I'm not sure I haven't gone through all of it yet. But yeah. what I have so far, I'm like, wow, I really resonate to this in terms of like an esoteric sort of worldview or um, view of the cosmos. And otherwise I'm, I'm influenced by like artists and I'm influenced by um, fairy tales, um, like things that wouldn't necessarily be specific on the topic of spirituality, but like I find that within it. Um, how about like, like deities or spirits or was there like a first something like something yeah. outside of yourself that you connected to? The first instance, if I think back to being a child. I mean, for one, I think as a child, you're automatically more connected. It's just like, that's just like your way of being as a child. Um, but I remember specifically working with a sort of spirit when um, I was going through a particular hardship in childhood and someone, a friend, a friend's parent, I think my friend's mom gifted me these tapes and they were these tapes about connecting to like your personal angel. And I remember listening to those tapes over and over and over again and feeling like there was this presence with me and feeling like I could like speak to this presence with me and feeling like warm hands on my back and like stuff like that. Wow, yeah. Um, so that's been something that stuck with me. And I wish I knew what those recordings were, what they were from. Um, I would love to hear them again because I remember them being so yeah. meaningful. Were they cassette tapes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah cassette tapes. I, I don't even know where they would be now. Like as physical objects, I don't even know. Wow. Oh, that'd be so mm -hmm. neat to find again. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm sure it would like flood back a lot of stuff because there's like music in the background. And you know when you hear, it's like when you smell a smell and then it just like takes you back somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like when you hear music, 
you ha- do you still have like a strong connection to angels or is that more of a spirit guide kind of thing now or I think so and I think it doesn't it doesn't have to have the label of of angel like you could think of it like spirit mm-hmm. guides um and in, in a similar way I feel connected to the fae and I think that sort of shifts and changes depending on where I am because I think it's mm-hmm. kind of mostly the local yeah. um nature spirits that I feel like I'm connecting to in terms of deities I'm not really one to work with I say this, but actually there's one I I strongly work with. I actually work a lot with Mother Mary. I have a whole like Mother Earth rosary practice. It's not, I'm not like, I was never Catholic. So I never (laughs) prayed the rosary as like a Catholic. Mm -hmm. I came to it as, you know, through like paganism or through, you know, like, like connecting to it as like a Mother Earth kind of symbol. I just love looking back on this conversation about fairies and working with deities And I also wanted to point out that Violet is also an artist. So I highly recommend checking out her Etsy shop that has a combination of uh, her artwork as well as magical craftings. And it's also where you can purchase some private readings if you're interested in that. In this next clip, Violet shares with us uh, talking about working, since we were talking about working with Mother Mary, she shares with us her rosary that she works with. She also has a book recommendation, Way of the Rose, The Radical Path of the Divine Feminine Hidden in the Rosary. And this is by Perdita Finn and Clark Strand. And then we get into how she made the transition from being mostly a creative creator, like an artist, to the live streaming and doing tarot readings. It's a it's a witch's rosary, and it's got the pentagram. Oh wow! Yeah, the pentagram on it. So I love like prayer beads. So rosary is usually there are different kinds, but five pieces of um, pieces, fragments of ten, so like fifty, right. with like a bigger one in between. Yeah. Yeah, which is cool actually that there are five and then we've got you know the the pentacles so mm-hmm. i like it <laughs> that's interesting my my family is catholic so i i've always <laughs> been attracted and drawn to r- rosaries but it kind of transitioned into malas so i i work with my mala a lot yeah i have a book for you then yeah <laughs> it's, it's called <laughs> the way of the rose by clark strand and perdita finn mm-hmm. And it's all about coming to the rosary from like a more so like a, a nature spirituality perspective. Oh, it's an incredible book. And I've had a, uh, some like magical experiences with them as well, like the authors. So I like highly, highly, highly recommend it. Wow, cool. So most of us know you as a uh, live streaming tarot. Um, mm-hmm. What kind of made you make that transition into putting yourself out there as a tarot reader or as a spiritual person? Yeah, I I started YouTube as a hobby, um, but I also wanted it to be something kind of separate from my day-to-day real life. So I, I started, it's interesting because I started my YouTube channel under my magical name, which is Violet Hummingbird. That's my magical name. Mm-hmm. And, but I started mostly doing planning videos because that's like, I don't know, it's one of my hobbies. Um, I know it's one of yours too. And I would watch lots of plan with me's and stuff like that. And I would always think like, oh, I would love to live stream planning content. But naturally I was also drawn to talking about spirituality and stuff as well. And in terms of actually like live streaming tarot, I I started, I started doing these, um, these meditation sessions on YouTube, which I don't even think, I don't even think I still have like the replays up from those. It was, uh, you know, a long time ago, I was like trying to find space and carve out time for myself from like being a mother, being a new mother. It was when Arthur was a baby and thinking, okay, I really want to have my meditation practice because I used to sit and meditate for 45 minutes at a time, which now I'm like, how? Like I, I would not have that time to do it. Um, I hope someday in the future. 
but I tried to do a thing where I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to sit, I'm going to meditate and, but I'm going to stream it. And so it'll like, you know, have this other, it's like, here's a, here's a bubble in which I do it. Um, and Lars was so sweet to like, let me go off and do that. And, and then I would pull Oracle cards for people when they would come. And then I had this crazy, like falling out with, um, I work as a personal assistant to this artist and I can only describe it as sort of like a double wears Prada kind of situation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was really, really intense. And I had a falling out with her and um, I, I lost that income completely. And then I thought like, okay, what can I do from home as a mom? Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna start streaming tarot and like taking it seriously. So that was sort of, my my progression into streaming tarot so since you kind of brought it up already that you are mm -hmm. a mom um is there anything that you can recommend to other mothers to like find that time to have your personal practice and have it just be like your own yeah it's it's funny because it's something that i thought i was doing and then i just in the last like month or so realized that I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't doing it at all. Um, I thought that I was being so smart by making my, my work that I was doing, the stuff that I'd want to do for myself, like my hobbies, like planning, watercoloring, my, my meditation practice, you know, my spiritual practice, tarot, like all of the things that I love and, um, having community, making friends. And I realized about a month ago that I had put into my personal business, my entire like social outlet, my entire spiritual practice, obviously the business itself, but not only that, my entire creativity practice was all in this like same thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I just had the realization that I, I actually, I need to do this. I need to split it up somehow because too much is wrapped in. So, so let's say that like, um, you know, naturally streaming has like ups and downs. We'd go through waves, um, being content creators, we'd go through waves. Um, if I was like on sort of like a down wave where I was feeling down about things, I felt down about all these different areas in my life because they were all like tied up together. I just realized that, um, and, and Lars actually really pushed me to do this, that I needed to go and do something outside of this. So I joined a yoga studio and now I'm like going and being around people, but not having to facilitate it. I'm like doing a practice yeah. and I'm meeting people, but I'm also being able to just like be in my own energy and also have it be separate from being at home and being a mom, like literally like physically going somewhere and being in a different type of space and a different kind of energy. Mm -hmm. um, it's made so much difference. So I don't know if that's helpful to other moms necessarily, um, but hopefully something about that would be. Yeah. It's something I'm still realizing and kind of working through. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it's relatable uh, to other mothers out there. And <laughs> I think that's really good advice too, though, is that just you have to do it. You have to have your, you have to separate your you time and I think that anybody can kind of relate to that, especially most of us here that are creators or um, even just people that work from home. Like you have yeah. to separate your workspace from your personal space, even if you're, you are mixing the two to still have that like <laughs> separation somehow. Yeah, totally. So if I haven't said it already, Violet is a tarot streamer here on YouTube. She also does planning videos, craft videos. So you can find her here on YouTube. You can also find Violet Hummingbird on Twitch. And she also has a very unique way of reading. And she also creates these wonderfully beautiful spreads for the Sabbaths and the seasons of the year, as well as new moon and full moon spreads that are just so unique and I look forward to just even seeing what she's created for the specific time of year. So these are exclusive spreads that you can only get around that time, whether it's the new moon or full moon. So in this next clip, we're just talking about the other things that she offers and where and how to find her. 
I'll link all of that information in the description box below. So be sure to check out uh, her Kofi shop, her Etsy shop, as and as well as following her here on YouTube and Twitch. So back to back to reading tarot. Um, mm-hmm. What would how would you describe your reading style? So I think I'm always kind of figuring it out as I go along. <laughs> Um, so I think my reading style is intuitive, just like the practice itself is about intuition. Um, so I really like creating my own spreads and figuring out different ways of, um, reading things or depending on like what the energy is of the question. I also, I also have this sort of, um, like gradual unfolding. I feel like I feel like sometimes I work with people in a way that if you keep coming back and either, you know, getting a reading or going with maybe the um, like collective message that there's, there's sort of a progression that happens and it's, and, and I think of it like a flower opening. I think of it as sort of like a soft, more like nurturing approach. Like things don't have to happen all at once. You don't have to get like kind of, uh, it's like, taking things just with what you can handle at the in the moment if that makes sense and trying to feel that out with a person mm. I don't know if I'm describing that well it's it's not something I've put into words quite no, a lot I, but... I, I see what you're saying because I think a lot of times like we don't want to hear the messages that are coming from the cards so to be able to separate just like that little bit of information that they can handle and work on and then come back and get the rest of that message, mm-hmm. um, I think that's a really wonderful skill to have. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, what type of services do you offer like in that sense? I mean, I know we, we you stream live, but what are the other services that you offer privately? Yeah, um, well... So privately, I would love to someday be able to do like private readings where I can, you know, get on a call and do that one on one with with someone. But at the moment with having a toddler um, scheduling things, it's just like, I can't do it. <laughs> so someday I will have that. But right now I yeah. do have um, typed options that if you like on my Etsy shop, if you order a reading there, I get back to you within 24 hours It's the same day. But I, I usually, and it's funny because I actually usually spend longer with these in a way than I would if it was live, but I'll, I'll type out a very detailed reading and I'll also like send photos of the cards. Um, but on Kofi, I also do monthly tarot scopes. So, and I'm just starting to incorporate more astrology into it as I'm learning astrology, um, making a spread for each sign. And I'm, I set the intention with the people who are like currently subscribed that it hopefully is very relevant to like them specifically, but also now it's like the cards, hopefully also incorporating more and more the astrology for the upcoming month, like what, wow. what to is, expect energy wise. Um, so that's a tier on my Kofi subscriptions. And as far as readings, I think other than that, I do them live and I also do a lot of collective readings live as well. So. It doesn't always have to be like one-on-one. It doesn't always have to be something you pay for. That's kind of my free offering is more of the collective stuff. <laughs> Do you have a favorite spread that you've made? Because you make like the most beautiful spreads mm-hmm. for like the new moons and the full Thank moons. you. Yeah. Thank you. I think my top two, I appreciate that. Yeah, I try to make like a one just totally based off of the moon that's upcoming and just like use it that one day. Um, <clears throat> I think my two favorite ones I've made, one was the white stag spread, which is, um, you know, the symbol of like, like a white stag. It's one I've actually run into in person. Like I've seen, I've seen a, an albino male deer in person. It was like such a striking moment with full antlers. Yeah. I've got a picture of it. I'll put it, I'll put it in discord. Oh my gosh. Um, Yeah. So I made this spread. Um, it was during the deer moon. And I can't remember exactly what it, it was sort of like it made the face of the deer and then the um, the cards went off to each side and each were an antler and each of those represented something. It had to do with what was going on with the moon at the time. And I don't remember exactly now. I really liked that one. And then the most recent one I did, which I thought was so much fun, it was for the pink moon. I went through all of my decks and took out all of the pink cards and just had this massive stack of cards of like all different sizes. Whoa. And um, 
just pulled out cards or saw what fell out and just used all pink cards and that was kind of fun wow that's so creative <laughs> so this is a community question um do you plan to teach your son tarot and if so when Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I think in general, when it comes to spirituality, I'm not going to like make him do anything if he's not interested in it. So um, I'm sure Lars <laughs> agrees. Well, kind of, you know, things can unfold organically. But we did get this family tarot deck. It's actually one I reviewed recently on the channel. I think it's called Tarot for All Ages. It's great. It's, it's, it's like a wonderful deck for kids or really for anyone, but um, they're, they're nice thick cards too. So I've actually already like laid them out on the bed and have Arthur just like flip through them and we talk about the pictures and it's just fun. Yeah. It's like, you know, like playing. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've come across a lot of um, children's decks. I don't know how that got into my algorithm, but it's uh, it seems like there's a lot more coming out now. Yeah. Or Oracle decks too. Yeah, I've seen a few other ones. That's the one we have. But yeah, I've seen some other ones as well. I hope you're enjoying this witchy chat with Violet Hummingbird. One of the things that we ended the stream with was her card game, Sabbath, a witch's card game uh, that she created. And in this next segment, I'm going to show you a little bit of the gameplay as well as uh, just Violet describing how she came up with the idea and a little bit about the process of creating it. Do you want to tell everybody about the game? And I'm I'm kind of interested just how it came to be and what the creative yeah. process was like. And I came up with the idea. Right I was sitting around playing a card game with my cousins. Christmas of 2020, I think. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, it'd be so cool to make a game. I don't even know what we were playing. I was like, oh, I would love to make like a witchy game where you had to collect items like, like certain types of crystals or maybe things with elemental correspondences to be able to like cast spells. And I was just like having this idea. And by the way, I, I don't know, there, there might be games that work like that, but I haven't played them. Like, I don't know if magic works that way. I know a lot of people play Magic the Gathering and I've never played it. But um, oh, yeah. so this, it doesn't feel like, that at least that's what Lars says anyway I feel like I should say that but um I was having this idea and then it wasn't until months later that I was like I'm gonna do it and it was I don't remember how long I was working on it but it was all I was working on like morning till night every wow. second I could get you know when you get a creative idea and you just have to like yeah. get it out or else it's sometimes it it, it at least me doesn't happen yeah <laughs> like half finished um so that's what that was like for me. And I remember like Lars and I, 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 I had index cards and I'd made example cards on each of them and we would play them each night oh, cool. and adjust things and be like, okay, well, how many cards do, should you start out with? And we'd play it like five different times and be like, okay, it feels like this works. You know, it took a lot of trial and error. Um, so which witch, are you, which witch are you going to be? Well, I was going to let you choose first. <laughs> um, I'm really drawn to the sea witch right now. I'm missing the ocean. The yeah. Show it to everyone. It's interesting. Maybe I should move the light somehow. I feel like when I... Uh, well, I have my... They can see my, my cards too. Oh, hey, cool. Yeah. Okay, so you're the sea witch. So your element's water. Um, I guess... When we when we were test playing together, I was the cottage witch. So I'm gonna go ahead and be my other favorite, which is the witch. forest okay. witch. I'm gonna be the forest witch this time. So my element will be earth. I worked so hard on this game, and it's one I, I rarely talk about on stream because it just like doesn't come up. It's it's so creative. It's like Thank everything you. about it is just so very unique, and oh. I, I love it. I'm, I'm so, I'm so happy. To, <laughs> I've had this deck for like quite some time now. Like, for, I think I bought it when I first met you. And then I got it and yeah. I was so excited. And then I was like, I don't have anybody to play it with me. <laughs> well, yeah, we need to figure out now that we've tested it out and we know we can, we can play this on Discord. Yeah. We just have to do it. <laughs> yeah, because we Amber has one. So everybody yes. let us know when you get the deck so that we know who wants to play and yes. we can set a date. Oh my gosh. Because um, we can do up to five people each time. So we could have 
we could have Lars play it too, and then and then we'd have five. Or if anyone else, it, there's no notification. Um, I'd have to check my email. If anyone gets it or got it, let me know because <laughs> I'm yeah, so excited. Yeah, let us know. Is there anything that like we didn't mention that you want to make sure that everybody knows about your oracle, your collage oracle? That oh my I'm, goodness! I'm so Another excited. thing I'm so bad at promoting. <laughs> yes, it's hard. Yes. Okay, so I'm doing a thing. If you subscribe to it and you can subscribe on Kofi or on Patreon, um, I have another, I, oh, here it is. Okay, so if you subscribe to this this thing, um, <laughs> which is what's its name, I'm calling it the Card Slingers um, under Kofi. It's like the Card Slingers. I love um, it. Here. And basically you get, you get a binder. It's gonna actually have um, some paper and some information in it. You get a binder and you get a bag in the mail the first month. And then the first month you also get a card and then every month you also, wow, I'm like, so not say like, this is why I can't promote my stuff. I'm so bad at talking about well, it. Okay, it's... so basically I'm making an Oracle deck and I'm doing it one card at a time each month. And I'm mailing everyone out the card as well as a description to go with the card. So basically you can build your own Oracle deck um by collecting your cards in the bag and collecting the writing for the deck in the binder and um like i've got a couple cards here that i've already sent out bloop, bloop, bloop. oh my gosh um, I've, been so, I've been so excited to see them oh yeah so th these are the first two. so basically uh, the, the theme is collaging different elements together um and here's another with Whoa. trees beep, beep, beep. Um, and there's also like words on it and stuff so that you could look at it at different times and like have different elements pop out at you or see things in, you know, um, in different ways. So it's called the collage oracle. And it's this idea, I made a video of it on YouTube, this idea that you can use collage as a method of divination. You can do it by making a collage yourself mm. and then seeing the way things like line up and speak to each other. Or you can do it by interpreting a collage and you could, you know, do that with the collage you make yourself or with another one like just seeing how things pop out to you or speak to you in that given moment um so that's also why the binder is just like plain because my my suggestion is that you make your own collage oh, oh, binder i make love one. that that's so cool thank you <laughs> so basically the membership supports me along the way of kind of making this deck and i'm also thinking of it as its own like method of divination as well um, which I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of, but it's definitely something that's felt personal to me. I mostly see collages being used as like vision boards and manifestation. And this is um, like a different way of using collage. I love that idea to decorate the notebook. And thank you. I like I've been so excited to see this. Um, oh. So that's the Card Slingers <laughs> Kofi membership. And yeah. or on Patreon, it's available on both. Um, okay. The difference is because when you subscribe, you get all of the lower tier, um, all of those benefits as well. And on Kofi, it's all focused on spiritual stuff. And on Patreon, it's all focused on art stuff. Obviously, the like the collage oracle is both. It's spirituality and art right. in a way. So that's why it it's on both platforms. But you can choose whichever one you want, like the other benefits to go along with it, if that makes sense. Thanks so much for hanging out with Violet and I and revisiting that really fun live stream. So this was just a really wonderful collaboration. I really felt supported by her and I hope that I did her just as much justice as I feel like she gave to me to have these collaborations and to have these communities that we've created to really feel that warmth and support that this experience was like for me. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on the other side of the looking glass.
Pando is a community pet. I thought Pando was a person. Oh. <laughs> because I kept seeing the Zs in chat and I was like, oh, Pando thinks I'm boring. No, I literally no. thought that all the time. I literally did. Oh my gosh. No, I'm so sorry. I don't.